Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Thierry, for the introduction, and thank you for facilitating this uh, panel, and thank you also for a very interesting discussion so far. I'm very happy to be here and to be invited. Let me say something very briefly about Startcraft, because I don't, I'm not sure whether everybody knows the company. Startcraft is a state-owned company uh, in Norway. Uh, we are a hydro uh, power producer and trader. We are number one in Europe in renewable energy. Uh, we have 90% uh, renewable energy, mainly hydropower, also some wind. The rest of that is uh, gas-fired power, sta power stations in Norway and in Germany. Our basis is in Norway, where we have 11,000 megawatts installed. We have more than one-third of the Norwegian storage capacity. Uh, we are also very active in Latin America and Southeast Asia that we do through our um, subsidiary SN Power. And we also do investments in Africa and in Central America through another company which is called Agua Imada. All in all, we are a developer, a generator, and a trader of electricity. And water is our most important resource. And that is uh, why I'm very happy to be here today and share some thoughts about that. You might have seen that picture from the IPCC. It shows something about climate change and water availability. And uh, the colored areas are those where 90% of the models which the IPCC has run agree upon the change of in, in the, cha in the direction of the change. So we see that there were dramatic changes in uh, many areas of the world concerning water availability. Some areas will become much drier than they are today, the yellow reddish ones, and some will become wetter. And we know that the changes in uh, the, the pattern of precipitation will also be dramatic. So we are facing change in water availability. Hydropower's role in both adapting and mitigating climate change is unique. The world needs more low carbon energy for mitigating climate change, although that's a long-term perspective, as was said earlier today. And water management is uh, also an important tool to adapt to climate change. So this is how the future might look. This is more a picture which shows the status of today. On a global level, there's still a lot of potential for developing hydropower mainly in those areas where many people don't have access to energy. So there's, there's quite a coincidence betwe between that. And probably in those areas, many people don't have access to clean water either. Hydropower can be developed in a sustainable way, way and it can provide clean energy. We have done a lot of efforts in developing sustainability criteria. Our company has been very active with the International Hydropower Association in developing the sustainability protocol and we are following all that, that in all our developments. We, there's always a main goal to minimize the impact on the er environment, which is an issue with hydropower development. Hydropower makes water available, and that it makes available by storing the runoff water. It makes it available for irrigation and uh, for drinking water. And hydropower has a social dimension as well because it uh, provides infrastructure when we develop the plants. It also provides employment and does a lot of social contributions like school building and so on. Uh, the title for this was water scarcity. Hydropower is important, as we already mentioned, in mitigating freshwater scarcity. There's a close interlinkage between water, energy, and climate change. Uh, providing water for sustainable development will require more active water management and global and regional water management. And since hydropower plants often are s associated with the creation of water storage facil facilities, hydropower is exactly at that crossroad where it can play an important role in enhancing both energy and water scarcity and security. The World Bank mentioned in its sector strategy, resource sector strategy, that developing countries have as little as one hundredth of the hydraulic infrastructure compared with developing countries. And it was suggested that developing countries construct well-performing hydrological 
uh, infrastructure to, to secure water availability. And that can be used both for hydropower generation and for water management. We know of some examples, or we, I mean, we are actually doing that in some of our concessions. In Turkey, for example, we are developing hydropower, and there the law says that energy availability is prioritized after ir irrigation and flood control. So the main purpose with building the hydropower station is irrigation and flood control, and then energy comes as number three, and that is what we are doing there. In Albania, we are looking at hydropower development as well. There, there's a requirement in the concession to guarantee water for irrigation, which needs to be stored all the time. So we also would make water available in, in dry years. So there's a very close link between energy and water availability. In Norway as well, we do the same thing. Their water is not really a scarce resource, as you might have guessed already. But uh, for some of the municipalities, we actually use our reservoirs for making water available and providing the municipalities and the industry with water. And in the difference between heights, where the reservoir is and where the municipality is, we have small power stations which then generate electricity at the same time. So uh, hydropower generation goes very much hand in hand with mitigating freshwater scarcity. Let me say a few words about water availability and the energy markets. And this is just one picture, just one little spot to illustrate that. It is on showing how hydropower generation can change from year to year. And in this example from France, where you had a very dry year uh, in 2011 and a very wet year in 2008, where the production nearly doubled. So there's a difference about uh, over one terawatt hour. But water is important for other fuels too. I mean, water is in the rivers, and uh, many of the rivers are used to transport coal. In Germany, for example, a lot of the coal is transported on rivers to the different coal stations. Uh, there was a very dry summer and very warm summer some three years ago, I think it was, where there was an issue that the water levels were too low and the coal could not be transported, so that changed the whole energy market. At the same time, the water became rather warm, and it could not be used for cooling either, because the nuclear power stations, they need the rivers for cooling, and that is especially an issue in the countries where you have the power stations along the rivers. And then if temperatures are too high, it's really only precipitation which can change the temperature again. The melt-off doesn't change the temperature. Before that water is close to the power station, it has warmed up too much. And very warm summers also often go hand in hand with very dry summers. So that is, is an issue for the whole energy market. Um, we do have very ambitious goals to increase the share of renewable energies. This is a picture on how we can integrate the different various, the different uh, renewable energies. We can produce from different sources, but they don't have the same ability. Some are variable, very variable. Some are providing mostly base load. Hydropower is, in a way, in the middle. It can be very flexible when you have storage facilities. It can also provide a lot of base load, and it can provide a lot of energy. These are not competing with each other, but they are working together. And uh, the sum of the parts is actually higher than it would be if you would not integrate. If you do that for the whole family, and that is then to mitigate really climate change because it would enable a large share of renewables, you would need to utilize the whole spectre of hydro, both the micros, the small, the run of river, and the storage hydropower. So as a very brief conclusion, we see the future role of hydropower to meet the energy need. It can be large scale or small scale, it can be integrated or decentralized, and it is a driving force for development. It provides flexibility for the other variable energy sources because it gives quick responses to changes in the weather. And that will become more and more important the more renewables we have. And that's not only then water scarcity, but can also be wind and sun, of course. It mitigates climate change because it provides clean energy. And it mitigates fresh water scarcity. It makes water available. It adapts to climate change, especially at multi-purpose hydropower plants provide uh, irrigation and flood control, also navigation and recreation, tourism, and so on. There's a need for dams. 
and it is sustainable. And we as a company see this absolutely as a business opportunity. There's value coming not only from the power production, but we also have an innovative approach to the development and operation of multi-purpose hydropower. And with that, thank you for your attention.